Our story begins, as most do, in a counting house in mid-1800s London. It's Christmas Eve, and the counting house is that of Scrooge and Marley. And in the counting house, Ebenezer Scrooge, he's, he's counting up all his money. I think that's what he does for a living. He counts money. He, he gets money and he counts it. And then he's got his clerk there, Bob Cratchit, in the other room. I guess he's writing down numbers or something like that. It starts with Bob. Bob, he goes into the, the other room to the, the coal scuttle, and he's like trying to get some coal. And Ebenezer Scrooge sees him and is like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? And Bob's like, well, it's kind of cold in the other room, and I wanted to put some coal on the fire. And Scrooge is like, coal costs money. What do you think you're doing? No. Just leave the cold there. You can have some, some other time. Not right now. And Bob's like, okay. All right, so then in, in through the dough walks Fred, who is Scrooge's nephew. And uh, Fred's, he, Fred's a, an affable chap. So he comes in and he's like, hey, Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge. And Scrooge is like, bah humbug. And I hate Christmas. And Fred is like, D come on, what's up with the bah humbug? You know, I hear this all the time. You... You're, you're essing on Christmas, and it isn't right. And Scrooge is like, I don't see any reason why I should be uh, celebrating Christmas. And Fred's like, well, it's a great time, whatever. I just, I just came by to invite you over to my, my house for dinner because I'm having a little shindig. And, you know, I, my wife's going to be there. My friends are going to be there. And Scrooge is like, I don't want to come over there. And he's like, man, why did... Fred, why did you even get married? And Fred's like, oh, that's kind of a weird line of conversation, but because I fell in love. I fell in love with this chick. That's why I married her. And uh, Scrooge is like, well, that's a bad reason to, to get married and sign your life away. And Fred's like, okay, well, you seem to be in a bad mood, but, you know, the invitation is always open. Merry Christmas. You, you know, one day you're going to see. You're going to see. Uncle Scrooge, I'm telling you, mark my words, you're going to see that I'm right. And so Fred's like, Merry Christmas. And he gets out of there. In through the door then walks a couple of gentlemanly guys. And they are trying to get some money, hustle up some money for charity. And they, they're kind of pushy. They're, they kind of do a hard sell. They go up to Scrooge and they say, are you uh, Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? And Scrooge is like, well... Uh, Marley died uh, a while ago, so thanks for asking. But yeah, he's dead, so I'm Scrooge. They're like, oh, cool. Um, we're raising money for charity for you know poor people who don't have enough to eat and don't have a place to stay and stuff during Christmas. Uh, can you help us out? And Scrooge is like, w are, did the prisons all close down? Are there no workhouses anymore? And the guys are like, yeah, of course there are. And Scrooge says, well, then they should just go there because I pay my tax money. What's the point in paying all this tax money if the poor people are then going to ask me for some more charitable donations? You know what I'm saying? So they're like, well, they don't want to go there. They'd rather die than go to prison or a workhouse. And Scrooge says, good, they should die then. They should die and decrease the surplus population. Now, at this point, you would think that the gentleman would just be like, whoa, okay, I'll see you later. But they keep pressing, and they're like, um, well, you know, at this time of year, maybe you could stop being a jerk and give some money. So how much, uh, do, you, how much do you want to give, or something like that? Scrooge is like, nothing. And they're so dumb. They're like, you wish to remain anonymous? And he says, I wish to be left alone. Get out of my... Get out of my counting house, guys. I'm not giving no money. So they leave. Bob Cratchit, having witnessed this awkward altercation, comes up. It's like the worst timing. And he's like, uh, yeah, so tomorrow's Christmas Day. And can I, can I have the day off, please? And Scrooge is like, you want, you want Christmas Day off? What does this look like? Does this look like a government job? No. And Bob is like, please, please, it's Christmas Day. I have, I have kids and a family and stuff. And eventually Scrooge is like, okay, whatever. You can have the day off, but you better get your butt in here extra early 
the day after Christmas. And Bob's like, okay. And Scrooge is like, okay, whatever. The day is over. I'm getting out of here. Scrooge retires to his domicile. And he goes and he has, you know, his uh, gruel for dinner or whatever. And he's sitting there in front of the fire reminiscing about his, uh, his past. And all of a sudden there's all these weird sounds. And then the ghost of Jacob Marley, his dead partner from the counting office, shows up. And it's like, you know, it's kind of scary, man. It's a, it's a ghost, and he's got all these chains and, and lock boxes on him. At first, Scrooge is like, whoa, 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 what are you? And the ghost says, in life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. And Scrooge is like, what are the, what's up with the chains? And Marley says, these chains I forged in life. I did this to myself because I was a stingy, greedy SOB, sort of like you are now. So now th this is my punishment as I just kind of like fly around at night with these chains on me and uh, there ain't nothing I can do about it. But let me tell you something, buddy. I've seen your chains. I've seen the chains you are making for yourself. They are way worse than mine. And you are going to be royally effed if you don't turn things around. And Scrooge is like, oh, okay, uh, <laughs> thanks for telling me. And Marley's like, look, I've got this all worked out for you. There's going to be three spirits that are going to visit you tonight. And Scrooge is like, I, I don't really want to do that. But Marley's like, I'm sorry, you don't have a choice. We're doing this. It's, it's happening. I've already put in the paperwork. They're scheduled to show up. Uh, it'll be when the clock, the clock strikes one or something like that, the first one will show up. Okay, cool. And Scrooge is like, I guess, I guess so. And then Marley leaves. Scrooge somehow is able to go to bed. Then the clock strikes one and he wakes up and he's like, ah, that was just a dream. I was hallucinating. That was just something I ate tonight. You know, it's the 1800s. I probably got some foodborne illness that made me hallucinate just at that very moment this ghost appears. It's like a little boy with like a little flame on top of his head. And Scrooge is like, okay, who, who are you? Are you like a spirit that's supposed to come? And, and the, the spirit's like, yeah. He's, he says, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. And Scrooge says, long past? And the ghost says, no, your past. And Scrooge is like, okay, cool. So uh, how's this, what are we going to do? And the spirit says, come on, follow me. We're going to go, got to go back in time. And so they do. The first place they go is uh, Ebenezer's childhood on Christmas. And there's like little kid Ebenezer. So Ebenezer's looking at Ebenezer as a child. And uh, he's sitting there. He's kind of sad, the kid. And then his little sister, Fan, runs out. And she's like, hey, Ebenezer. Come on back to the house, you know, dad is, uh, he's not in a rage anymore and it'll be great. It'll, you know, he's so much nicer now. Come on, we're going to have a great Christmas. And, you know, Scrooge is getting a little misty eyed and uh, the ghost is like, so that's your sister, huh? And he's like, yeah. And the ghost is like, so she, you know, she grew up and had a kid, right? And then died, right? And Scrooge is like, yeah. It's pretty sad. It's, uh, you know, it ain't right. The ghost is like, okay, we got, we got more stuff to see. This is like going on too long. Next, they visit Scrooge as a young man. He's working for an uh, old Fezziwig, doing something. Maybe, you know, counting money again. Maybe that's what he was doing there. Ebenezer's there, I don't know, in his 20s, late teens. He and his buddy Dick Wilkins... And old, Ebene old Ebenezer, old Fezziwig comes out and is like, all right, boys, the work's done for tonight. Now clean up this place. We're going to be uh, throwing a party tonight. So let's, let's get this together. So then the ghost and old Ebenezer are watching this, this Christmas party go on at old Fezziwig's. The ghost is like, man, these people sure are happy, aren't they? He just spent a couple pounds of his money and these simple people are happy. And, uh, you know, Ebenezer gets to reminiscing and he's like, yeah, he was a great guy. He really was. But then also at the party, there's uh, this girl named Belle and Ebenezer is uh, chosen by her because she's in, she's in high demand. But 
she chooses Ebenezer as the, the guy she likes. So then f the ghost is like, okay, we got more crap to see. They fast forward to a few Christmases later. And Belle, his girlfriend, is there again. I think, she, she, I think she's his fiance now. He popped the question. But uh, they're alone together. And he's like counting some money. Right? Like Scrooge does. And she's like, you are obsessed with money. You don't care about anything except money. You don't care about me enough. And he's like, well, this is the way of the world. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to be poor? You know, the world hates poor people. And then when you become rich, they hate you. So what, what am I supposed to do, Belle, huh? And she's like, well, here's your ring back. You know, you figure yourself out. And uh, <laughs> she left him. She broke up with him right there. And uh, so then the, the, the ghost of Christmas past, he's like, we got one more thing to look at. And Scrooge is like, oh, man, I don't want to see anything else. But the, the little boy with the flame above his head is like, no, we're, we're going. And they go a few Christmases later and, oh, crap, Belle is married. She found another guy who wasn't obsessed with money. And they're, uh, you know, they're talking about how happy they are and stuff and... Uh, her husband says, hey, you know who I saw in the street today? I saw that guy Scrooge. Didn't you used to date him? A little awkward, but, you know, I said hi, whatever. And she's like, yeah, you know, he seems like he's really unhappy. And, uh, you know, I wish the best to him, but I dodged a bullet. So then Ebenezer is like, man, can you please stop showing me this crap? This is making me feel really regretful of how I've screwed up my life. And the ghost says, hey, man, don't blame me for this. I'm just showing you what happened. This is your life. This isn't something I made up. And Ebenezer starts to freak out. And the ghost just says, OK, I've had enough and departs. And Ebenezer's back in his bedroom. Oh, my gosh. The clock strikes one again, I think. Maybe it strikes two. It strikes something. The clock strikes something. And Ebenezer's like, what the? What the? And all of a sudden, there's this fat guy in a robe in his room. Scrooge is like, e excuse, what the eh? And the spirit, this new spirit, the fat guy's a spirit. He's not just a fat guy. He says, uh, I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have not seen the like of me before. And Scrooge is like, yeah, you're right. I haven't. I haven't seen a fat guy in a robe in my room before. And so he's like, okay, dude, we're going to look at some, we're going to do some, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Tom peeping, peeping Tomery around town. We're going to see what people are up to on this Christmas. Uh, this Christmas will be a very special Christmas for me. So the, the ghost of Christmas present is like, okay, we got to go. Touch my robe. And so Scrooge touches it, and then they fly out of the window or something. And first they go to the party that Fred is having that uh, he didn't go to. And, you know, Fred is actually his sister Fan's son, if you didn't put that together. So he goes, uh, they go and they spy on the party that Fred and his wife and their friends are having. And they start playing 20 questions. And one of the things they pick is Uncle Scrooge. Oh, my gosh. So everyone's making fun of Uncle Scrooge. And Fred is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I feel kind of sorry for him. He's like kind of a cantankerous old guy. And he's, you know, really sad. And, you know, I feel bad for him. So even though he's kind of a jerk, let me propose a toast to him and a Merry Christmas to him and all that stuff. So everyone toasts to Scrooge, and he's kind of like, well, this is getting a little too uh, sentimental for me. So then they fly over to Bob Cratchit's house, and Bob isn't home yet, but there's, there's a lot of people there, the, the mother and the kids. Bob Cratchit has a lot of kids. He has, I don't know, four, five, six kids. He's lost count. He has so many. So they're all gathered around, and uh, Bob comes in with this little kid on his shoulders. It's Tiny Tim, oh my gosh. And you know, once he puts him down on the ground, Tiny Tim is like hobbling around. He's got crutches, because something's wrong with his legs. So they're, they're flicted, if you will. But they seem to be like happy 
with their life, even though it's crappy, which perturbs Scrooge. He's like, why? Why? Why are they happy? They don't have anything. And uh, Bob Cratchit even proposes a toast and says to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast, and his wife is like, he's not founder of the feast. He, he barely pays you anything. And Bob is like, whoa, 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 calm down. Like, you know, I'm lucky to have a job. In this economy, I'm lucky to have a job. You know, even though I've got a crippled kid and I'm poor, this is great and Christmas is amazing. And Scrooge is like, huh, this is, this is very far from my worldview and experience. And Ebenezer's like, why are you showing me this stuff? And the ghost of Christmas present is like, uh, I don't know, but let me show you one more thing. And he opens up his robe, but there's something unexpected there. He's got these two little kids that are clinging to him. The spirit does. And he says, look at these two kids, a boy and a girl. The boy is ignorance and the girl is want. The, the boy is a little bit more concerning because on his head I see written doom. And that's what's going to happen if uh, we don't change things around here in society. And Scrooge is like, oh. Okay. So then the, the ghost of Christmas present uh, goes away. And then all of a sudden, Scrooge feels a little weird. And this hooded figure comes out of the shadows. A shadowy figure emerges. And it's... Uh, the ghosts of Christmas yet to come. And you know, he's got this, his, this hood over his head. You can't tell who he is, what he looks like. And he doesn't say anything. So Scrooge is like, uh, who are you? No response. Uh, are you the ghost of Christmas yet to come that you know, I was told about? He doesn't say anything. So Scrooge is like, okay, well, I guess, I guess you're the guy, so just take me where we're going. I'm used to this by now. Uh, nothing, nothing shocks me anymore. So first they go to like this uh, high society gathering, you know. There's a, a bunch of gentlemen there, a gentleman's club. <laughs> it's not a gentleman's club. But you know, it's an exclusive club. Um, and a couple of the guys there, actually the guys who came around to get the, the money for charity from him earlier, and they're all laughing and joking around, and Scrooge listens in, and they're like, yeah, when, when, so when did this guy die? And they're talking about it, and like, I don't know when he died. What did he die from? I don't know. Who cares? Are you going to the funeral? Well, I'll go if there's a free lunch, but uh, if there's not, what's the point? And Scrooge is like, this is kind of disturbing, because they're talking about a guy who died. They seem to know who he is. Wonder who it could be. The guy they're talking about clearly was hated and not not cared about. So then the the ghost of Christmas yet to come the, takes Scrooge to this uh, shady building where there's this guy there named Old Joe. In fact, it's his place. It's Old Joe's place, I think. For some reason, I keep thinking Old Joe's Crab Shack, but that doesn't, that's totally wrong. That's not correct at all. And then these two, these two ladies, these two old bags show up, and they've got a bunch of stuff with them. And the one woman is like, here, I've got these shirts. Uh, what can you give me for this? They say that to Old Joe. And Joe's like, oh, man, these are really nice shirts. Whoever had these, you know, they must have been high society and she was like yeah well he's dead so I took his shirts and he's like well what is, didn't you leave him anything and she's like what is he he doesn't need shirts where he's going because he's going down she doesn't say that but that's that's the intimation and he's like okay here's some money and then the other woman's like here I've got his bed curtains and he's like man did you take him down when he was there like when he was dead laying there and I forget if she says yes or no, but she probably, he was probably lying there dead when she took him down. Because she's weird. So she gets some money. And they all have a great laugh. Old Joe says, it was, or maybe the woman says, it was nice of him to die to profit us. 
when he was dead. That's not the right quote. Uh, close enough. They're like, I'm glad he's dead because we got money out of it. So uh, Scrooge is like, okay, this is... Uh, I'm getting a little nervous. I, I'm not that stupid. I sort of... Uh, I'm getting uneasy because I kind of recognized those bed curtains and those shirts that were being sold. But I'm just going to be in denial mode for a little bit and assume uh, plausible deniability is not me. So then the, the ghost of the future Christmases brings Scrooge to the Cratchit's house. And everyone's a bit, uh, you know, down in the dumps. And then all of a sudden, Bob Cratchit comes in, you know, he's a little bit, a little bit forlorn. And he's like, well, I went by Tiny Tim's grave today. It looks good. Um, so I think, I think he'd like the way his grave looks. And I think he'd, he'd like it if people looked at his grave and thought he was a good kid. And all of a sudden, Scrooge is like, oh my gosh, Tiny Tim died? Not Tiny Tim! No! No! No God! He's like, future, is this is messed up. Does Tiny Tim have to die? This ain't right. Then they take him, the, the future ghost, the Chris, Christmas future, takes him to a graveyard. And there's like this stone in the distance with, or no, there's like a shroud over it. It's close. The details don't matter. Scrooge is like, can you tell me before I take... Before I uncover this gravestone, can you tell me, is what you're showing me like definitely going to happen? Or is it sort of just like, maybe will happen if I don't uh, change my lifestyle? Uh, can you tell me? But of course, you know, the spirit doesn't say anything because this spirit don't talk. So Scrooge is like, okay, whatever. And he takes the shroud off of the, off of the gravestone and whoa. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it says Ebenezer Scrooge. He is dead. And he's like, no, no spirit, no, say it ain't so. And he starts to freak out and he's like, look, I'll do whatever it takes. I don't want to die. I don't want to die, spirit. I don't. Clarence, <laughs> I want to live again. He's like, I'm going to keep Christmas in my heart and live it every day, like the spirit of Christmas, and I'm going to be generous, and I'm going to be a good guy. I'm going to leave behind all the, gr the greedy SOB stuff that I was doing before, and I'm going to be good, gosh darn it. And so he's freaking out. And then all of a sudden, he looks around, and he's in his bedroom. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm alive. I'm not dead. It's Christmas. Oh my gosh, the spirits did it. The spirits changed me. I'm a changed man now. So then he, he, he bursts out of the window. I mean, he, he, you know, he just opens the window. He doesn't jump out. And he, he sees this kid down below. And he's like, yo, 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 kid, is it Christmas? And he's like, uh, yeah, it's Christmas. And he's, he's like, oh, great, I haven't missed it. The spirits, man, they did it all in one night. This is incredible. And the kid's like, okay, uh, that's weird. And... So Scrooge is like, okay, kid, do you know that shop down the street where there's a big turkey hanging in the window? And the kid says, yeah, of course I do. And so he says, go and buy it. And the kid says, Walker. I don't know what that means, but that's what the kid said. And he's like, no, 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 I'm serious. I'm going to pay you for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the money for the turkey, and I'm going to pay you a bunch of money on top of that. And the kid's like, okay. And then he says, now, once you buy it, bring it to Bob Cratchit, but don't tell him, don't tell him I sent it. But don't let that fool you. So then uh, Scrooge uh, gets dressed and he's like, okay. Or does he get, uh, I think he gets halfway dressed. I think he, he's running around in his pajamas, right? And then a top hat and a coat or something weird like that. Uh, when you've had an epiphany moment like this, you... You, there's no time for pants, really. So then Scrooge goes running through the streets in the snow, and he's yelling Merry Christmas to everybody. And everyone's kind of like, well, what the frick? And he, come, he runs across his nephew Fred, and Fred's a little bit like, uh... And <laughs> uh, Scrooge is like, Merry Christmas. I love you, man. And I want to come to dinner tonight. Is that okay? And Fred's like... 
Uh, yeah, that's that's great. But why are you why are you so changed all of a sudden? You seem a little. Uh, what's going on? And he's like, it's just the Christmas spirit, my boy. You know, Christmas has changed me. I'm a changed man. It's all because of. It's all because of. <clears throat> Christmas. So then he leaves Fred's company and he keeps running around and he he comes across those two guys who came. You know, the two charity guys who came earlier, and he's like, look, man, I am ready to give you some money. And they say, okay. And he's like, here's how much I'm going to give you. And their their minds are like exploded by how much money he's going to give to the charity. Everyone's like, wow, he's Scrooge is a changed man. This is amazing. The next day, Scrooge is back at work. He's there early. And Bob Cratchit comes in a little bit late. And Scrooge is like, Cratchit, you're late. What the heck? What is wrong with you? And Cratchit's like, I'm really sorry. I got drunk last night. And, uh, and Scrooge says, uh, you know, I'm really disappointed in you. And so I'm going to give you a raise. And Bob Cratchit is like, oh, my gosh, you've psyched me out there for a second, and this is great. And Scrooge is like, you know what, I'm even going to help you all the help you need so that Tiny Tim doesn't die because I saw into the future and saw that he died, and I don't want that to happen because I would feel bad about it. So I'm going to help you. And, you know, even tonight we're going to hang out. We're going to have some smoking bishop together. How about that? And Bob Cratchit is like, sounds good, boss. And that's the end. That's how, that's how it ends. That's a, that's a Christmas carol.